Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be taking our wooden floor material from the previous video and adding in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic lived in feel. First though, let's take a look at the files we'll need for this video. We're going to need the floor smudges type A medium 001 uh, overlay <laughs> and the gun scratches 003, both of which I already have saved to my hard drive and I'll include a link to them below the video. Okay, let's head over to Cinema 4D. So this is our render from last time. Um, if you'll remember, we brought in all the textures ourselves and set them up in R20's new uh, node editor. Um, after that, we made a few adjustments to the uh, displacement settings, added in this uh, adjustment for the roughness map. Um, and yeah, that was about it. Now, before we get started on adding in our... our <coughs> Now before we get started on adding in our imperfections, I just want to go over exactly what it is we're about to do. We're going to be taking our original roughness map, where the dark areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the brighter areas are less shiny, um, and then we're going to import our smudges texture. We're going to take the brighter areas of that map, uh, i.e. The, the footprints and smudges and whatnot, uh, and add that over the top of our roughness map. So. On the actual material, wherever there's uh, footprints and smudges and whatnot, they'll, they'll be the reflections will be more blurred, less reflective, just in those areas, um, which is exactly the sort of effect that we want. Once we have this sort of combined roughness map, we'll then feed that into our wooden floor material. Right, so let's get to work on our nodes. First thing I'm going to do now is take our normal and displacement maps and lower them down a little bit, just so we've got a bit more room to work with on our gloss map because that's the uh, the area where the smudges will be going in. So um, let's start by bringing in our smudges map. That seems like a good place to uh, begin. Uh, so I'll call this smudges like so and then we'll navigate to wherever it is you've saved your smudges. In my case it is here and we have a few different options to choose from. Um, the one I'm going to go for is the Overlay 16. Reason being is the, uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, the 16 files are 16-bit TIFF files which just offer more uh, color depth, more detail. Uh, so I'll always use those when I've got the option to. Right, so with that brought in, um, we need a way to introduce the smudges to our existing roughness map. And to do that, we're going to use a blend, much like we've used uh, to adjust the roughness there. So I'll bring that in, um, and then we'll change the blend mode to screen. Now, a screen mix type is a really good way of taking bright areas from one map and overlaying them onto another. Yeah. So I'm going to place the roughness in the background, the smudges in the foreground, and, oh, it's the other way around, I think. My bad. Let's try that again. So the roughness in the foreground, and then the, what's going on here? Ah, I missed out an important step. If you remember from the previous video, um, textures that do not contribute towards the color of a material, things like roughness maps, smudge maps, or, or sorry, imperfection maps, any form of overlay, displacement maps, we need to change the mode type to uh, raw, or a linear color profile. And instantly as I do that, we can now see <laughs> the, the effect a bit more clearly. So that's uh, that's why uh, it shows the importance of doing that. Otherwise the, the gamma corrections really do uh, get in the way of the texture. So now we have our map combined. Um, you can see our original roughness map is underneath the smudges and the smudges are, are overlaid nicely on top. So if I feed this into the roughness map, like so, uh, and give it a render, again, I'm just gonna turn my render settings down a little, we should start to see some smudges. Yeah. We have smudges. Okay, um, we have a few issues though. Um, first of all, the effect is definitely too strong. Uh, it's kind of hard to see as well uh, on this lower preview setting, but uh, you, you can tell that, that they're definitely too strong. Um, and also they're scaled incorrectly. If you look at, say, these smudges here, these are supposed to be footprints. If you compare that to the size of the floorboards, that would be some fairly tiny feet. 
or I suppose some really large floorboards but <laughs> I, I'm making the assumption that these are tiny feet so we want to we want to fix that so let's go back into our nodes uh, and address both those issues first of all we'll fix the tiling of the smudges texture to do that just type in UV into the assets and then we want this UV transform node we're going to connect that to our smudges under the input of context I'm not sure why it's context um, but it is <laughs> just take my word for it um, and then from this UV transform uh, node we have local repetitions and if I were to increase that to say 2 that would then double the amount of tiling um, we want to go the other way though we want our smudges to be smaller so I'm going to use a value of 0.7 there we go so that should work really well for us in this instance um, and then I'm going to create a little bit more room because our other issue, if you remember, was our smudges are too strong. And what I'm going to do is use the exact same method that we used to um, adjust our gloss map. I'm going to bring in a multiply blend. I think if I type in multiply and drag in bend, yeah, that's quite that's quite handy. So yeah, we've got we've got our blend uh, shader in now with the multiply blend mode already selected, and I'll feed the uh, smudges into the foreground and then the color into the background. And you'll see at this point, our smudges have completely disappeared, yeah? So, ooh, another thing I wanna do is give this a name. Smudges adjust, there we go. And if I take this background color and increase it to say white, our smudges come back. So that that, that background color now becomes our control for this uh, for this effect. So if I set this to say a mid gray, that should that should lessen it quite a bit, um, but still enough to be noticeable, which is which is kind of what we want. Maybe a little higher actually. Yeah, I think something like that will work really well for us, and that should be our smudge is done. Um, I'm not even going to uh, hit another render. I don't think there's any need to. We've we've definitely yeah, uh, we've definitely done what we need to there. I think all I will do is change the name of this node to smudges add this is the point where the smudges get added in to the uh, to the roughness map okay so the next thing we need to do is bring in our scratches now they don't affect the gloss map that's going to be done differently so we don't need to make more room we'll just do it underneath the rest so if I go to uh, if I type in image and then dragging another image call this one scratches like so and then under the file menu, uh, let's find our gun scratches. There they are. Now, with these ones, we do have a bunch of different choices. We've got displacement maps, normal maps, and overlays. Uh, the one I'm going to use... Now, we're going to be tiling this quite a bit. So, in this particular instance, I'm not going to bother with the 16-bit the one, simply because the black scratches on a white background will probably be easier. Um, when you're dealing with a bump map, which is what we're going to be creating here, the black areas of a bump map are the bits that cut in, um, whereas if it was white scratches, it would bump out and we'd have to invert it. So let's just make it easier on ourselves and bring in these uh, black scratches on a white background. There we go. This too, I'm going to change to raw, linear color profile. We don't want gamma corrections applied to this either. And I'm going to feed that directly into the bump value, which so then gives us the, the bump node in there. And let's just look at the bump bit on its own. Good, we have a strength value here. Now, at 100%, this is going to be way too strong, uh, but I'll leave it there uh, for now just so we can see what that does as default. Uh, the little preview there is giving us a, an indication that this effect might be a bit on the strong side. But let's hit render and see what we get. Okay, so as expected, our scratches are not looking particularly great, but they are at least cutting in the right way, so it's, it's good we picked that map. Um, the things we need to address is the strength and the scaling. We want our scratches to be a lot smaller and a lot less, uh, a lot less strong. What we can tell from this render, though, is the changes we've made to the smudges are good. The, the scaling's looking good, as is the strength. So, let's go back into our nodes, make a few final adjustments, and then we'll be done. So, under the... Uh, main shader here. I'm going to go down to the scratches and turn the strength down to like, I don't know, 
probably five percent even that might be might be too high but uh, we'll, we'll try it at that value and then we need to bring in another one of those UV transform nodes like we did with the uh, with the smudges connect that again to the context input of the scratches and now we can change the tiling in this case we want to go up and I'm going to change mine to a value of about six that'll make the scratches a lot smaller and that should be us so I'm going to up the render settings again so we can get our final render and take a look okay so yeah that's our, our finished rendering it's, it's looking really good uh, the smudges are just about spot on uh, I think the scratches are good too um, if they were catching I think if you caught them at the at the wrong light they might still be just slightly too strong but uh, certainly for the purposes of a tutorial I think we can call that job done so in summary, we've taken our wooden floor material from the previous video and added in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic lived-in feel.